Hi, this is Galeazzo Frudo of Frudo.com. I received a lot of requests about making a video uh, about how to adjust the 8 of the string on the Stratocaster, which you know is different from other guitars, just like for example Gibson guitar, because Stratocaster has cellos that can be adjusted in 8 individually. This is a fantastic thing for us because it allows us to tailor the setup to our needs and also has an impact on the tone but I understand that it might be tricky for someone At the end of the video you will be able to perform the eight of the saddles and the action on the Stratocaster in total relax and total knowledge of what you are doing The Stratocaster bridge is a you know very simple device you have a um, six screw that holds the bridge on the top of the guitar and you have other C screws that allows you to adjust the intonation which is something that you have to do after what we are covering in this tutorial and then there are 12 small hex screws which thanks to this small hex key will allow you to adjust the individual eight of each string by turning counterclockwise you lower the eight by turning clockwise you Rise V8. A correct setup must cover first of all the neck relief through the truss rod adjustment and then adjusting the bridge, adjusting the nut and then the intonation. So the guitar is at the point that we already adjusted the neck relief with a light relief and we just have to take care of the bridge saddle 8. Now you remember that we already covered in our video how the strings vibrate. The string is fixed at both sides and when it vibrates, it forms an ellipse pattern like that, you know, which has its maximum width in the middle with chord on the guitar corresponds to a 12th fret. So you probably know that the fretboard has a radius, its radius is not flat. And uh, this radius is different for each guitar. For example, the old strats are 7.5 inches, the new ones are 9.5. And then you go up with other guitars, just like the Gibson's one, for example, are 12. Uh, up to modern stuff, which can uh, arrive to 16, uh, 16 uh, inches radius. But the, the, the strats have this kind of radius, which is one of the more radius fretboard ever, especially the oldest one, this one. So, we said that the biggest string has a wider string vibration pattern than the smaller ones. So, when we set the eight of the saddles at bridge on the Stratocaster, we will have to decrease proportionally the eight of the string as long as we go toward the smaller ones. This means that this string, the eight, the low E strings will be higher on the fretboard than the high uh, E string. But we will encounter a problem with bending because if we lower the string too much on such a reduced fretboard, while doing the bending, it will happen that the string will cross over the fretboard and stop at the half of our bending. So the goal of this video is exactly to learn to set up all these you know things as a compromise to have the best tone, the best action ever and not have the problem with the bending. Now as for me it's very important that you train your eyes so you're totally independent in doing the setup of the of your guitar. Let's use a trick to let you understand better what I mean. Let's draw six lines on a sheet of paper, just like this, so that you simulate the strings. Let's now cut the piece of paper. Let's take the guitar, some adhesive paper, cut some piece, cut another piece and place it on the other side, here, and then put it here and here. Now, Check how the lines rise at the horizon that way. This is what we want to recreate with the strings. The same effect. The first thing that we will have to do is lower the middle and the bridge pickup. Because pickups are magnets and they attract strings and by attracting strings they can cause buzz especially on the lower strings. So we don't want this to affect our adjustment now. Before you do this you can get a caliber and take the measurement of how they are now so you are sure that you can recreate that uh, later on. 
You remember that we have to keep the lower string higher or they will rattle on the fretboard. And you remember that we cannot keep the higher strings too low because otherwise they will stop during the bending. So we will set up the 8 of the D and G strings first. Looking at the saddles from this side, what I want to come up with is something that looks like this. Where from the first saddle to the other one there's about 1 mm, 2 mm here, 1 mm, 2 mm here. The D and the G are uh, identical and there there's 1 mm, 1 mm and a half here, 1 mm and 1 mm and a half here. Adjust the G and D saddle by inserting the, the hex key here. If you see that the, the hex key tend to be loose inside the hole, just release the tension of the strings that way. You know, so it will work faster and easier. Just rise the action of the D and G strings how you like it. I will now give you reference of how I adjust it for you know my likes. You can use this as a starting point. I just you know rise the action of the D and G strings to a, an action that I like. I will now give you exact measurement of that. You know anyway, how it sounds like is this. I don't feel any buzz, I feel comfortable, it's soft enough, so it's okay for me. I'm giving you the measurement from the top of the frets and the top of the strings, not the bottom, the top. So the G string is 2.3 and the D string is 2.8 at the last fret. This is something that is good for me, maybe not good for you, but you know, you can experiment with that. Now follow me carefully, we have the G and D saddle set to the correct height that we want, okay? We now have this other A and E and B and E saddle to still have to be set up. Now, what we know is that we want these two strings not to stop when we make the bending. So we will rise the E string now to the point where it no longer stops during the bending. Note that I should do this with the guitar in playing position, but I can't hold the camera, so I will do that with the guitar on the table. It's now stopping. I rise the saddle. Both the same eight. It's still, it's still making some kind of butt here, here. So I want to raise it up just a little bit more. Be sure that the saddle are, you know, touching each other. Okay, let me tune it, tune this ring. Okay, is is no longer buzzing. So now we have the G saddle set up, the D saddle set up. These two ones we'll see later. We have the and we have the E higher E string set up. How do we set the B string? It's very simple. This is the saddle of the higher E. This is the saddle of the G. We put that in between. So we have the same distance here and here. Check it out. The B string is the now at almost the same height of the E string. We want this one to be halfway between the height of the E string and the height of the G string. So we rise this that way. Remember, it must you must rise both screw together. And voila. So now we have same distance from here to here, but we have from here to here. We tune and we check if it stops during bang or not. It tends to slightly butt in the higher part of the bending, but it, for me it's okay. So what we ended up is that now we have, have four saddles adjusted. The E string correctly adjusted, the B string correctly adjusted, the G and the D string 
correctly adjusted and we have now to go through the A and E. Now to adjust the A string I have to you know use the same process as before but I have a problem because the X key is loose and it doesn't allow me to rise uh, the saddle. So I have three choices here. The first one being that I can take a bigger uh, hex key and modify it with the file, reduce the tip so that it grips inside the head screw. The second one is to cut the last three, four millimeters of this hex key to see if a newer part not you know worn out part will get inside the, uh, the hole and the third one is the one that I'm going to show you now. To release the tension of the string that way insert the X key and bend it a bit you know aside so it makes more grip. Okay I'm rising this one check it out so that I have about one millimeter here lower just like this and then I tune again I'm now going through the low B string Okay, this one doesn't work, so I have to lower the tension again. And I'm rising this one about one millimeter and a half lower than the A string. Cool. I now check that the strings, you know, make an even radius, which is not actually the same of the fretboard, it's a wider one. You remember I show you the drawing, I'm checking this that way, I'm, I'm showing you so you train your eye to do that. I noticed that the D string is a bit higher and this one is a bit lower so I'm going to adjust them. So I'm going to lower the D string a bit that way and to rise this one like this and like this. So this is what I ended up with. This saddle is about two millimeter higher than this one. This one, the G1, is about two millimeters higher than this one. This one are, are almost the same height. The A is one millimeter lower than the, than the D. And the E string is about one millimeter, maybe a bit less, lower than this one. This ended up with the action which I like and uh, this allows me to use this guitar uh, without having any problem with the bending and any buzz on the air frets. Of course, this is just a starting point for you to set up everything at your convenience. Whatever you do on the saddles, whatever you do on the bridge, you just have to make sure to recreate this kind of pattern that you see here. So you can lower or rise that, lower a bit these two strings, the E and the, and the B if you don't care about if it stops a bit during the bending or if you have a softer touch you can also lower the low E and the A string uh, you know as much as you like. Use this as a starting point to recreate your own setup. You will now have to rise the pickup to the point that they were before using the caliper if you want to recreate the exact me measurement that you have previously or to your taste. You know, I'm you know, just doing something average now. I will cover pickup adjustment uh, on a dedicated video, but it's not the case now. Cool. To resume, start with the D and G string. Adjust them to an height that is good for you. Remember that before that you have to make trusted adjustments. So check the other video for that. Then go to the higher E string and adjust the height so that the when you bend the string, it doesn't stop during the bending. Then put the B string in between, as I show you. Then go up to the, or down as you want, to the E, low E and A string and rise them following the same curvature that I show you in the video to an height that is good for you according to the touch that you have. We are at the end of the video. I need to tell you that there are some other very light 
adjustment to be made to the height of the strings when we are uh, going through the pickups adjustment. But I will show you that after I made the video on the pickup adjustment because these are important for those of you who like to, be, to, to have a very even and balanced tone on each string, on each portion and on each fret of the fretboard. Thanks for staying with me and see you in the next video. Ciao! Bye!